Okay, all right. So today I'm going to be talking to you about zombie cells. So this is really a relatively new understanding of what is at the root cause of type 2 diabetes and many other chronic diseases, including Alzheimer's, osteoarthritis, cancer, and cardiovascular disease. So when a cell is damaged, and the cell might be damaged from a poor lifestyle, poor diet, high blood sugars, mitochondrial dysfunction, which is a big one in people with metabolic problems, and um, damage to DNA. So cells will continually replicate themselves or they'll make copies of themselves to make new cells. And in some tissues, this happens at a very fast rate. For example, in your mouth and your gastrointestinal tract, this is happening at a very fast rate. So, you know, you might notice when you wake up in the morning that you've got a lot of sort of um, scum in your mouth and or on your lips and that's because the cells are turning over there they're copying them themselves and making new cells whereas places um, in places like the pancreas so the pancreatis the pancreatic beta cells this happens at a much slower rate now why am i telling you this because if you have a damaged cell we don't want that to be making copies of itself and producing more damaged cells because that could lead to things like cancer so one of two things will happen when a cell is damaged and it will either commit suicide which we call apoptosis so the cell will trigger a response and it will basically die it will kill itself it will blow up and um, its insides will be distributed and it will get um, you know used up for other things and I mean, this in itself is also not good because we are essentially losing healthy cells and the, this can create an inf inflammatory response as, as well. The other thing that can happen is the cell can become a zombie cell. So we call this cellular senescence. And in the short term, this is a good thing because we don't want that damaged cell to go on to become a cancer cell. So this cell senescence in the short term is actually a protective mechanism. So it's protecting us from these damaged cells replicating and potentially causing problems. However, this zombie cell, what it actually does, it's not dead, it's still there, it's still active, it's just not doing what it's normally meant to do. So for example, if it was a beta cell that was meant to produce or secrete insulin, it no longer does that. It doesn't function like a normal cell. It just sits there and it can secrete inflammatory molecules. And so what it can actually do is It secretes these inflammatory molecules and it can actually disrupt all its neighboring cells. So it can cause damage to the surrounding cells. So in the short term, this senescence or senescent cells is protective, but in the long term, they sit there, they take up room so you can't produce more healthy cells because you can only produce a certain number of cells in you know, a defined amount of space. So it takes up room and it secretes these inflammatory molecules that can then cause damage to surrounding tissue. So if this happens in the pancreas, you might have some senescent cells that are sitting there and they're taking up space so you can't produce more healthy cells that are then able to you know, secrete insulin and function properly. And then they are potentially causing more damage to surrounding cells and potentially contributing to the progression of type 2 diabetes. Because you know, if there's more damage to surrounding tissue in the pancreas and then you, you're less able to produce insulin because you don't have these proper functioning cells, then this can contribute to um, worsening of the condition. And this happens in everywhere in the body basically. So that's 
why um, there's been a lot of research in recent years and this is really um, you know becoming a very keen area of interest for many researchers and um, physicians because it gives us a better understanding of aging and these chronic diseases and there's been a lot of um, research as well to look at drugs that can selectively target and destroy these senescent cells and in animal studies it has actually been shown to improve health outcomes and to prolong life so in, improve longevity however we have to always be careful when we start messing with biology because we can't forget that this is a protective mechanism to protect us from cancer. So while these senescent cells, we don't want too many senescent cells. I mean, ideally we don't want the cell to be damaged in the first place because that cell used to be a healthy cell. So we don't want the healthy cells to become damaged, but we also ideally don't want too many of these senescent cells because they are going to contribute to aging. So, yeah, as I said, of course, there's been an interest in drugs because there's money in drugs, but it's really, you know, in early stages, the research is very young. And I think we dare say we'll have to uh, really watch this space because it, it may be that, you know, messing too much with these senescent cells with drugs can actually backfire. So, Apart from drugs, there are actually other lifestyle things or other ways, more natural ways that we can try and first of all, prevent these, cell, these damaged cells from dying or becoming senescent cells. And of course, you know, just having a healthy diet and lifestyle is going to be very um, conducive to that because having a healthy diet and lifestyle. I mean, we're always exposed to things that are potentially gonna cause damage to the cells and even just functioning cells can potentially become damaged. So having a really healthy diet and lifestyle can make these cells more resilient. So they're better able to cope and they're better able to correct things themselves so they don't go down either of these paths. But uh, a few ways that you can um, try, a few ways that you can, really help to promote, uh, I guess, a spring clean where you get rid of these faulty cells uh, are So one way is intermittent fasting. So intermittent fasting, uh, so it's not the same as just skipping breakfast. Intermittent fasting is when you're going for a prolonged period of time without food, or at least um, no calories. So that would just be drinking water and non-caloric drinks, for example. And that would have to be at least 24 hours or more to start seeing these effects. We don't know exactly what the ideal time is, and you know, depending on what you're trying to uh, achieve. But we have found that for um, intermittent fasting promotes what we call autophagy. And autophagy is where the cells um, do this big spring clean and they get rid of faulty cells, they get rid of things that aren't um, providing or pulling their weight. Um, so at the end of the day, if you're, you're fasting, if you've got no food coming in, the body senses that, there's no nutrients, so it thinks, Okay, I have, to go to go to into, I have to go into survival mode and if we're going into survival mode, we need to be very resourceful. We need to get rid of things that are using up energy that aren't providing value. And, um, you know, if there's these faulty things lying around, can we use them for other things? Um, so they recycle some faulty cells and faulty um, things within cells. So it really does promote this autophagy and spring clean. So intermittent fasting is a, a really um, potent one. And in some studies, they've actually found that extended fast, so you know, five, seven days, for example, that your organs shrink. Because when you're fasting like that, and there's, the body is getting rid of all these faulty cells and faulty things lying around, uh, you get rid of them. So the organs have actually been shown to shrink. And then when you break the fast and you feed again, of course, what you 
what you eat when you break the fast is important, but when you feed again, you have all these primed stem cells to grow. So they will grow and you'll grow more new healthy cells. So when you break the fast in these studies, it's been shown to actually, um, I mean, the organs grow again back to their normal size. And that's because they're growing back, um, but they're growing new healthy cells. So intermittent fasting is one way. Sleep is another way. So, I mean, when you're sleeping, you're technically fasting and it's the same kind of thing. It's giving your body that time to really do a good spring clean, clean up things, um, faulty things and get rid of waste and um, helping to, if there are damaged cells, helping these damaged cells to repair um, so they don't go down either of these pathways. So sleep is really important. Exercise. So exercise is another really good way of promoting autophagy. So um, spring cleaning, get rid of faulty cells and promoting the growth of new healthy cells. And number four, phytonutrients. So phytonutrients, so phyto means plants and nutrients, obviously nutrients. So these are basically nutrients found in plants that have been found to um, promote autophagy. So helping to clean up these faulty cells and promote the growth of new healthy cells. So, um, I mean, there's thousands and thousands. I think there's at this stage about 9,000 phytonutrients identified. Some have been studied a lot more than others, and I guess some have just recently been discovered. But for the ones that have been studied, um, you know, the phytonutrients in things like vegetables, legumes, extra virgin olive oil, and berries. And these phytonutrients have been shown to promote this, uh, promote autophagy and to help uh, clean up these faulty cells. So at the end of the day, these senescent cells, you know, in the short term, they are protecting us. We ideally don't want the cells to become damaged in the first place. But if they do, um, we want to make sure that we're giving our body what it needs and we're, you know, using these things to help clean up the, the faulty cells so they're not sitting there taking up space and contributing to um, the progression or the worsening of disease and aging. So, that's about all I wanted to say today. Um, I hope you have found this interesting and helpful. If you did like it, make sure that you click on the like button below, share it with friends or family if you think that they would also find it interesting and helpful. The other thing I wanted to just um, tell you today or let you know about is a program or my program. I have a, an online 12 week program that teaches you all about what exactly is at the root cause of this insulin dysfunction and type 2 diabetes. And I basically give you everything possible to treat and target this root cause so that you can overcome this insulin dysfunction and type 2 diabetes for good. So if you are interested, if you're really serious about this and you're you know, just finding that you're not getting good or the right information and you would really like to work with someone like myself, make sure you scroll down and click on the button below to, to find out more about the program. Um, if you really are serious about this, then um, I'd really like to, to work with you. Okay, so that's about all I wanted to say today. All right.